Hello and welcome to this online event which explains the current consultation on the Dover District Local Plan. I'm Ashley Taylor, Planning Policy and Projects Manager at Dover District Council and joining me presenting today are Carly Pettit and Corin Hart. We also have Alex Newson, Gillian Barr and Catherine Hughes who will be managing your questions as they are submitted in the Q&A section. The purpose of today's event is to provide you with a summary of the proposals that are set out in the Regulation 19 Submission Local Plan. We'll also run through how to view the plan online and make comments through the online consultation portal. Our presentation will last around 30 minutes, leaving plenty of time for us to answer questions. We will be recording this event today and are hoping to be able to provide the recording on the website for anyone who is unable to attend or if you wish to watch anything back you will not be visible on the screen. I'm now going to run through the format of the question and answer session. If you have any questions, please submit these using the Q&A function, which should appear on the right hand side of your screen. Questions will be moderated before they're published. Please do not provide your name or other personal information in the space available. This is to ensure that questions remain anonymous, so we are not publishing or sharing any personal information. You can submit questions throughout the presentations. We may be able to respond to some through written response and others will be left for a verbal response during the Q&A slots. We may not be able to deal with more detailed questions or those relating to specific sites. If that is the case, we will ask for the question to be sent to us by email after the event so we are able to provide a specific detailed response. Please do not submit your views on proposals set out in the plan in this event. We will not be accepting them through this format or be able to publish them. They must be made on the comment form available or through the portal to be valid. We will try to get through as many questions as possible. However, if we run out of time or if you do not think your question has been answered by the end of the event, please send it to localplan at dover.gov.uk. I'll start with a bit of background about local plans and why we are producing one for Dover District. A local plan lies at the heart of the planning system. It provides the framework against which all planning applications are judged and how a decision is made. A robust and up-to-date local plan ensures growth is well planned, well designed and appropriately located. It addresses future ambitions and helps to prevent speculative de development which can harm local communities and the environment. This new local plan for Dover District establishes the general scale and distribution of new development which is required to meet Dover's needs up to 2040. It clarifies where new homes, workplaces and infrastructure facilities will be located through allocations of land. It plays an integral role in mitigating and adapting to climate change and it helps to enrich the district's biodiversity, protect valued landscapes and conserve and enhance the wide range of historic and natural assets that our district enjoys. It provides the planning principles, including detailed development management policies to guide decisions on planning applications. The local plan must be prepared taking into account the requirements of government policy set out in the National Planning Policy Framework and Planning Practice Guidance. So why are we producing a new local plan right now? The district's existing local plan consists of the core strategy 2010 and the land allocations plan 2015, as well as saved policies from the 2002 local plan. It has now been some time since these documents were produced and the government has made changes to legislation, policy and guidance since these plans were developed, which means they need to be reviewed and updated. It is important that we have an up-to-date local plan so that it can be used to guide local decisions on planning applications. The government also requires all local authorities to have an up-to-date local plan in place by December 2023. Producing a local plan requires a lot of background work, including evidence collection, research and consultation and engagement. We started work on this local plan back in 2017 and since then we have carried out a range of targeted stakeholder consultation. We have researched and developed the evidence we have identified and assessed the different options for dealing with the issues which the plan needs to address. We have prepared topic papers which draw together the evidence base and help to explain and justify the proposals in the plan. These are available on the evidence base page of the website. We then prepared draft policies and proposals which were set out in the draft plan 
which was subject to consultation in early 2021. Since then, we have reviewed all responses received to that consultation. We have updated the evidence base and carried out further targeted engagement with key stakeholders. We have then prepared the submission local plan for this Regulation 19 publication process. We're currently at the stage which is known as the uh, Regulation 19 stage. Um, so this is the um, publication of the version which the council considers to be sound and is intending to submit to the planning inspectorate. The, the consultation is open for seven weeks and it closes at 5 p.m. on the 9th of December. We are also formally consulting on some supporting documents and that includes the sustainability appraisal, habitats regulations assessment and infrastructure delivery plan. Comments to the local plan must be made on the comment form, um, which has a um, set standard and there are specific questions which um, must be answered. This can be completed through the consultation portal. That is the easiest way to respond. Um, all information is available on the website, www.doverdistrictlocalplan.gov.uk. And Corin will be giving a demonstration later of the website and also the consultation portal to aid in you providing responses. We are required to prepare a summary of the key issues raised and the council's initial response to them. This may include an indication to the planning inspectorate that the council would be willing to agree amendments to address the issues raised. This summary will be submitted alongside full copies of all of the representations received, the plan itself, and the evidence and supporting documents to the planning inspectorate. This is expected to take place before the end of March 2023. The planning inspectorate will then set a date for the examination and we expect that to be sometime in the summer of 2023. It is really important that you submit your views at this stage. If you submit your views at Reg 18, you will need to submit them again to ensure they can be considered by the planning inspectorate at the examination. This is also your opportunity to let us know whether you wish to attend the examination itself. Moving on to a summary of the key proposals in the Regulation 19 local plan. The structure of the plan has been updated and amended since the Regulation 18 draft of the plan. Following on from the introductory section and the vision and objectives of the plan, the policies are now set out in three main sections. That's chapter three, strategic policies, Chapter 4, Site Allocations, and Chapters 5 to 12, which are Topic-Based Development Management Policies. The strategic policies set out the overarching strategy for the plan, including the amount and location of development, as well as infrastructure. They include key policies needed to deliver the strategy and set out the framework for the more detailed development management policies. The Site Allocations Policies set out individual policies for sites which are proposed for development and include site-specific criteria. We have sought to avoid unnecessary repetition of requirements that are also set out in the development management policies. This is explained in the introductory section to the site policies chapter. The sites are arranged by settlement in order to their position in a settlement hierarchy. Some small sites, generally under 30 units, have been grouped into single policies by settlement. The development management policies are set out in chapters 5 to 12 by topic area. They set out specific detailed requirements which planning applications will be judged against. In terms of the vision and objectives of the plan, which is set out in chapter 2, the foundation of the plan is a bold new vision for Dover District in 2040, encompassing a prosperous economy, vibrant communities, thriving places and a spectacular and sustainable environment. A vision needs to be specific to Dover District, it should be aspirational but also deliverable. The vision is supported by objectives which set out how the vision will be delivered and form the basis for proposals set out in the plan. The objectives follow the themes of the vision and are linked directly to specific chapters in the plan. We have also identified cross-cutting objectives which are supported by the plan as a whole. The key diagram sets out the plan's strategic proposals and is included after the strategic objectives. We will now provide a summary of the plan by topic area. For each topic, this will, cover the, this will cover the strategic and development management policies that are relevant. Relating to climate change, Dover District Council declared a climate emergency in November 2019 
and the Council has an ambition to become a net zero carbon emitter by 2030. This new local plan supports and helps to deliver the Council's approach to the climate change emergency through a series of policies which aim to ensure that development proposals which come forward mitigate against and adapt to the effects of climate change. The following policies in the plan are proposed to address this. Strategic Policy 1 sets out the overarching climate change strategy in which the detailed CC policies sit within. Policy CC1, reducing carbon emissions. For residential development, this requires development to comply with the government's future home standard. For commercial development, this requires development to achieve the BRIAM Very Good standard overall, including very good for addressing maximum energy efficiencies under the energy credits. And this is until such a time as the future building standards come into force. Policy CC2, sustainable design and construction. This requires additional design and construction criteria to further reduce carbon emissions from new development. Policy CC3, renewable and low carbon energy development. This policy supports proposals for new installations for the production of renewable and low carbon energy and sets out criteria to ensure any potential local impacts are taken into account. Policy CC4, water efficiency. This requires the installation of the highest water efficiency standards allowed in new development. Policy CC5, flood risk. This policy seeks to prevent inappropriate development in areas at risk of flooding and also to prevent an increase in the risk of flooding elsewhere by requiring development to be in accordance with the Council's strategic flood risk assessment. Policy CC6, surface water management. This policy requires the use of sustainable drainage systems to accommodate surface water in new developments. Policy CC7, coastal change management areas. This policy identifies the coastal change management area boundaries and prevents new and appropriate development within these areas. Policy CC8, tree planting and protection. This policy proposes an increase in tree planting and protection, including by requiring a minimum of two new trees to be planted for every new dwelling and a minimum of one new tree for every 500 square metres of new commercial floor space. Policy TI1 in the Transport and Infrastructure Chapter also supports the climate change strategy in requiring the provision of non-car based modes of transport in new development. In relation to providing new homes, national policy means that the local plan must seek to meet the district's identified housing need, which is based on the government specified methodology. This means that our new plan needs to identify land to deliver a minimum of 10,998 new homes across the plan period to 2040, which is 611 new homes a year. The distribution of the housing growth is mainly based upon the existing assessment hierarchy and is influenced by environmental and other constraints. New sites for housing development will continue to be focused on the development and regeneration of the town of Dover and the urban expansion at Whitfield. A minimum of 3,381 new homes are therefore proposed in and around Dover Town, the majority of which will be delivered by the urban extension at Whitfield. Land is allocated to deliver in the region of 220 homes in Deal, 650 homes in Aylsham and 230 homes in Sandwich. Development in rural areas will be spread across the district's local centres and large and small villages, taking into account constraints and the social and community facilities and services available. Land is allocated for approximately 1,112 homes in rural villages. This includes approximately 350 new homes in Athorne and Elmington to strengthen this local centre in the district. Residential windfall development, which are sites which are usually small in scale and come forward for development but have not been specifically allocated within the plan, are also expected to contribute to the supply of housing over the plan period. Policy SP4 sets out the criteria against which such applications will be assessed. The plan sets out a requirement that 30% of housing in new development must be affordable. This is set out in policy SP5. This is with the exception of the existing Dover urban area, where viability work has concluded that it is not economically viable to provide affordable housing in this location. A need for 14 additional gypsy and traveller pitches in the district over the plan period has been identified. This will be met in part by the intensification of some existing identified sites set out in policy H3. Policy H4, 
is a Gypsy and Traveller windfall policy, which sets out criteria by which other proposals for Gypsy and Traveller accommodation which come forward will be assessed. A number of policies are included in the local plan to guide planning applications for new housing. These address housing mix and type, policy H1, rural local needs housing, policy H2, self and custom built housing, policy H5, residential extensions and annexes, policy H6, and houses in multiple occupation, policy H7. The plan can do much to support the health of the economy and in particular provide for new premises and sites that businesses need. As with housing growth, growth, the new plan provides a firm foundation for meeting our future employment needs for the period up to 2040. Alongside policies for assessing planning applications for commercial proposals, land allocations for business and employment purposes are made at Whitecliffs Business Park, Discovery Park Sandwich, Elsham Development Area, Stattenborough Farm Eastry, and four sites are allocated for regeneration through a mix of uses at the former Snowdown Colliery, Western Heights, Fort Burgoyne and Dover Waterfront. The plan also includes other policies to support the local economy. Policy E1 applies to all proposals for new employment development. Policy E2 supports redevelopment and protects existing sites for employment use. Policy E3 relates to proposals for businesses operating from residential properties. And policy E4 supports proposals for new tourism facilities and also accommodations such as hotels and self-catering accommodation. The pandemic has been particularly keenly felt in town centres and by the retail and hospitality sectors, which form the heart of many of the settlements of this district. The local plan includes policies to protect the vitality and viability of deal and sandwich town centres, policies SP9 and SP10. For Dover Town Centre, the local plan includes a new town centre strategy, policy SP8, to create a more vibrant town centre, encourage a diversity, encourage a diverse range of uses, increase the number of visitors and improve the environment and connectivity between the town centre and the seafront. The plan also includes the following policies relating to retail and other town centre development. Policy R1 identifies the primary shopping areas for Dover, Deal and Sandwich Town Centres, setting out what uses and development, will, and development will be allowed in them. Policy R2 ensures new town centre development proposed outside of the towns does not harm their vitality and viability by requiring sequential tests and impact assessments to be carried out. Policy R3 supports the provision of new local shops and protects existing ones to support local communities. Policy R4 ensures the design of new shop fronts is high quality and appropriate for the area. I'm now going to hand over to Carly Pettit, who is going to take you through the rest of the local plan, starting with placemaking and design. Thank you, Carly. Thank you, Ashley, and good afternoon, everybody. High quality, inclusive design is essential in creating and maintaining places and communities across this district where people want to live and work now and in the future. Delivering development that achieves design excellence and that adds to the existing high quality, natural and historic environment is therefore a key priority for the Council. The existing Dover Development Plan does not contain any design policies and planning officers rely instead on national government advice. This new local plan seeks to address this and to ensure that local design objectives are also taken into account in all planning applications. Three design policies are proposed. Planning for healthy and inclusive communities, strategic policy SP2. This policy promotes improvement in the health and wellbeing of residents through high quality placemaking, including the provision of attractive areas of that green open spaces. Achieving high quality design and placemaking, policy PM1. This policy sets out detailed design requirements to ensure that new buildings and spaces are of the highest design quality and to create attractive, inclusive, healthy places which promote local distinctiveness and a sense of place. It also advises where significant design implications are identified on major proposals that these will be referred to a design review panel. Quality of residential accommodation, PM2. This policy confirms the criteria that new housing developments must meet to ensure the delivery of high quality residential accommodation across the district, including meeting the nationally described space standards and accessible and wheelchair friendly home requirements. The plan also includes policies to ensure new open spaces, Q 
community facilities and infrastructure provision are provided within development. These are policies PM3, providing open space, PM4, sports provision, and PM6, community facilities and services. Transport and movement within and into Dover District is a critical issue for the local plan, which must be addressed to ensure that the overall plan objectives and strategic site allocations can be delivered. The local plan now contains policy SP12, Strategic Transport Infrastructure, which covers the highway network and bus and rail infrastructure. The policy specifically covers the strategic highway network improvements needed at Whitfield and Duke of York roundabouts and other A2 strategic junctions. In addition, it supports the longer term improvements proposed by National Highways to implement the A2 Dover Access project. With regards to rail and bus infrastructure, the policy supports the reduced journey time proposals for HS1, the continued delivery of the Dover Fast Track bus service, which has commenced, and other local bus service provisions. The policy also refers to the Supporting Infrastructure Delivery Plan, the IDP, which sets out the specific detail of the strategic highway requirements and how these are intended to be funded through a proportionate contributions approach. With regards to ensuring local transport needs are addressed, including for active travel such as walking, cycling and bus, and to ensure enough parking is provided in new developments, the local plan includes the following development management policies which will be applied to new qualified developments. Sustainable Transport and Travel, Policy TI1. This policy requires new development to be designed to promote active traffic, travel modes such as bus, rail, cycling and walking, and safeguards existing pedestrian and cycle routes such as public rights of way. Transport Statements, Assessments and Travel Plans, Policy TI2. This policy applies to developments which generate significant traffic movements and new accesses onto the local highway network. It sets out guidance on when statements, assessments and travel plans will be required alongside a planning application and what level of detail they should contain. Parking provision on new development, policy TI3. This policy sets out the parking requirements for new developments, including alteration to existing buildings where parking may be amended and recommends the existing KCC parking standards be retained in the district. Overnight lorry parking facilities, policy TI4. This new policy supports the provision of lorry parking and is required by the National Planning Policy Framework. It promotes sites along the strategic highway network corridor in the district and sets certain requirements for its design. Ensuring that the right infrastructure is provided in the right place at the right time to support the scale of growth identified in the plan will be integral to its successful delivery. The local plan therefore includes policy SP11, infrastructure and developer contributions. This policy will enable the council to require new or enhanced infrastructure through a process known as planning obligations. In Dover, these are specifically dealt with through section 106 agreements and there are no plans to proceed with the community infrastructure levy. This policy will apply to all major development proposals. Planning obligations can require developers to create new facilities within their site or provide financial contributions to existing services to enhance and maintain them over a longer period. For the site allocations in the local plan, infrastructure requirements where they are known are set out in the site policies. The local plan also includes additional policies which set out how some of these local infrastructure requirements should be provided to meet the needs of new development. Some of these form part of the placemaking chapter already mentioned above, which relate to providing open space, sports provision and community services, and those already referenced in relation to transport and movement. Protection of existing infrastructure is also important, and policy PM5 protects existing open space designations, sports facilities, and in addition identifies and protects local green spaces. Policy R3 on local shops also helps protect local convenience stores. Policy TI5, Digital Technology, requires all new residential, public and business premises to have gigabit capable connections to meet the changing needs of residents and businesses. The local plan is supported by a draft IDP mentioned earlier, which identifies specific infrastructure needs for the district over the plan period, covering all types of services such as education, health, community sports, open spaces, transport water and other utilities which relate to policy SP11. 
It also includes detail of existing and planned infrastructure and how and when it might be delivered. We welcome your views on the draft IDP during this consultation stage. It is a living document which will evolve over time and we welcome input from providers and residents to assist in obtaining the most up-to-date information. More information on infrastructure can be found in the Section 106 and IDP FAQs document, also available on the website. Dover District enjoys spectacular landscapes and coastlines, many of which are valued and protected at local, regional, national and international level. These landscape assets are rich in biodiversity, priority habitats and protected species, and importantly provide significant environmental, social and economic benefits for the district and its residents. A key issue for the local plan is therefore how best to embrace growth in a way which respects and enhances our important landscapes, habitats and countryside, while also recognising that some forms of development support the rural economy and are necessary to maintain the vibrancy of rural communities as guided by the housing and local economy policies of this plan. Policies are included to conserve and enhance the rich natural environment in the district. Strategic Policy 13 will protect the district's hierarchy of designated environmental sites and biodiversity assets. Strategic Policy 14 will enhance our green infrastructure and biodiversity. Policy NE1 will deliver net gain in biodiversity in the district over the plan period. Policy NA2 requires development to protect and enhance the landscape character and distinctiveness of the district's countryside and coastline, including irreplaceable habitats, the areas of the Kent Downs area of outstanding natural beauty that fall within the boundary of the district and regionally importantly geological sites. Policy NE3 ensures against harmful impacts on, on the protected migratory bird species and integrity of the Thanet Coast and Sandwich Bay SPA through a mitigation and monitoring strategy. Policy NE4 seeks to deliver improvements in air quality over the plan period. Policy NE5 protects and seeks to enhance the water supply and water quality of the district. Policy NE6 protects and seeks to enhance the rare ecosystem of the River Dower chalk stream. Dover District benefits from a particularly significant archaeological and historical heritage, in part due to its strategic location as a gateway to Britain. This wealth of heritage asset includes those of national and international importance. The district is home to almost 2,000 listed buildings, 48 scheduled ancient monuments, 57 conservation areas, 21 historic parks and gardens, one protected rec site and 12 museums. The current development plan for the district includes only one historic environment policy for applications affecting historic parks and gardens and a strategic site policy for Dover Western Heights. The government now requires local planning authorities to set out a positive strategy for the conservation and enjoyment of the historic environment, including heritage assets most at risk through neglect, decay or other threats. This local plan therefore sets out a clear and positive strategy for the conservation, enjoyment and enhancement of our historic environment in the form of the following policies. Protecting the district's historic environment, strategic policy SP15, designated and non-designated heritage assets, policy HE1, Conservation Areas, Policy HE2, Archaeology, Policy HE3, Historic Parks and Gardens, Policy HE4, Dover Western Heights Fortification, Schedule Monument and Conservation Area, Site Allocation Policy, SOP4. This is the end of the presentation on the local plan and the policies within it. We're now moving on to a pre-recorded video prepared by Corinne Hart in our team, which runs through how to make comments um, going through pages on our website and the consultation portal.